In this video I'm going to show how to install the open firmware onto the MD TYT UV380 also known as a Retivis RT3S. This radio is branded as the uh, uh, RT3S but it's identical hardware to the TYT UV380. Now this is the dual band radio not the single band MD380 which is a completely different radio. The, the hardware in this radio is a cross between the uh, hardware in the GD77 uh, type radios and the MD9600 mobile radio. So it's uh, basically the CPU uh, is the same in this radio as the uh, 9600 but the radio hardware is the same as in the GD77. Uh, it's got a completely different display from both of those two radios. Obviously it's a colour display and uh, Obviously there's several other differences really in uh, terms of differences between either the GD77 or the uh, TYT uh, MD380. Anyway, uh, enough said about the radio. So in order that you install the firmware, first of all you're going to uh, need to back up your existing co-plug and also it's best to back up the calibration data. Now the Open firmware doesn't touch the calibration data, but uh, just for uh, just for safety sake, basically it's best to uh, back up the calibration data. So I'll just switch over onto my PC. Now I've got the official CPS installed on the PC, and I've just actually read the uh, code plug out from the radio. There's very very little in this code plug. Uh, just one I use for testing a few uh, channels on different frequencies, but I really don't uh, don't use the radio with the official firmware in it. Uh, so after you've read the code plug back from the radio in the usual way, there's a kind of secret function uh, in the uh, official CPS. Now, if you hold down the control key and the T key at the same time, so that's letter T, which is what I'm going to do now. After a few seconds you get this other screen that says test mode pops up on the screen. I think the radio may have rebooted as well. Now this is actually the calibration data for the radio and you can uh, then save, press this button to save the test data or effectively calibration data. Uh, now if you needed to restore the radio and for some reason it looked like the uh, calibration data was wrong. It shouldn't be wrong, but then at least you would have a copy of your calibration data to write back to the radio. Anyway, that shouldn't really be necessary because we don't touch the calibration data. But uh, there we go. Uh, this is exactly the same procedure as on the MD9600. Uh, effectively the CPS is very similar, but the official CPS is very similar between both these radios. Anyway, so assuming you've backed everything up, uh, the next step is to download the firmware and the CPS, the open firmware and the open uh, GD77 CPS. Now I've put links to that uh, on the installation page on the open GD77 forum. So you need to uh, download the CPS, so there's a link to the CPS, pick the one with the latest date in the folder. So currently it's uh, 091201, uh, so it was compiled a few days ago. And also you're going to need to download the latest alpha firmware, so there's a link to that on there. Now looking here you'll see there's two firmwares, there's the JA version and just the regular version. Now the JA version, one with Japanese support by no other languages, uh, Japanese and English, so most people just need the regular one without JA in front of it. The other thing you're going to need, if you don't already have an MD9600 running the open firmware, is you're going to need to download uh, the official 9600 firmware. Now the reason you need this is that we need it uh, as a donor file for the radio uh, for the DMR codec. Uh, this is exact, and to save, save development time basically, we just use the same donor file in the this radio as we use on the MD9600 because the CPU is the same chip. In fact the radio is quite similar in a lot of respects 
Uh, it's got the same DMR chip, same CPU chip. Anyway, so there's a link to download uh, that firmware here. Uh, where would that be? Sorry, down here. Okay, the one from Passion Radio. So once you've downloaded this, uh, that will be a zip file, and in the zip file, which I'll bring across here, you need this file here, which is all documented in, in the installation file. So download the zip file and then bring out this uh, bin file here and save that somewhere which won't get overwritten because you're going to need to reference that in a minute. Okay, so now we've downloaded the donor file, we've downloaded the firmware, we've downloaded the CPS. Now you need to install the OpenGD77 CPS and run the OpenGD77 CPS. So I'm just going to run the CPS now. Okay, let's put it on that screen. Right, there we go. Okay, so we've got the OpenGD77 CPS here. Now, in the OpenGD77 CPS, you need to uh, select the radio type as the uh, MD, uh, sorry, MD9600 or the UV380. So that's already selected on mine. And then from the extras menu, you need to pick the firmware loader. But on here, you need to change it to the MDUV380, which is this option there. Okay. The next thing you're going to need to do, if you don't already have a 9600 running the open uh, firmware, you're going to need to select your donor file, which is that file which we unzipped a minute ago. This, this one here. Okay. So... I'm going to select that. I've already selected it in the past. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to select it. I'm just going to hit cancel, but uh, if you don't already have it selected, you need to select that file. If you don't select the file, uh, it will allow you to upload to the radio, but you won't have any DMR functionality because it needs it for the DMR functionality. All right, so we're almost ready to go now. Now going back to the radio, so I'll just switch back to the radio. You need to put the radio into its firmware update mode. So to do that, you turn the radio off and then you hold the two buttons, top two buttons in on the left hand side. So that's those two there. It's the PTT and the top button, which is probably called SK1. So we're turning that on. OK, so after that, the radio just comes up with a blank screen, but the LED at the top flashes. Uh, you can't really see it in this video, but it's flashing between green and red. Okay, so that means the radio is in firmware update mode. If you look in your Windows Device Manager, which I'm going to bring up now, you should see this device here, uh, which says STM device in DFU mode. Now, if you don't see this, then you don't have the update driver, the official update driver installed onto your computer. So you need to download that as described in the, uh, so I'm just trying to get back to it now, I think I've closed it, oh no, okay. So that's described again in the installation. Probably the best bet, uh, regardless of whether you're running a UV380 or an RT3S, is to actually get it from Retivis. Uh, so I can't find it on the TYT site, but the RT3S update driver can be downloaded from here and uh, you need to unzip that and then uh, run it and it should install the driver. Now assuming you've got the driver installed then you're ready to go basically so in the CPS you select the for open firmware which you previously downloaded and you hit the open button here. Now you won't see any change on the radio if I was to flip to the radio, it just stays uh, blank screen still. And uh, during the update process, which doesn't take too long, I'll just wait for that to complete. And then switching back to the radio itself. Yeah, 
Okay, so the radio is now rebooting and is running the open firmware. Now the first thing you'll notice is you get all these error RX only messages and also that uh, you get strange frequencies in the VFO. Now this is because the official code plug is not supported because it's completely different format to the open GD77 code plug and, and the firmware is trying to read uh, the open GD77 code plug data can't really and you just end up with these crazy uh, crazy numbers in the VFO. I don't know if I, uh, there might be some remnants of my uh, GD77 code plug in here still but anyway uh, you'll get you'll get something like that, but basically ignore it. It's absolutely fine. So the next step is in the CPS. Before you upload a code plug, so we'll go back to the CPS. Is you're going to need to go into the extras OpenGD77 support, and you're going to need to back up the flash memory. Now this radio has got quite a lot of flash memory. It's got 16 megs of flash memory, so this process will take several minutes uh, to back up the uh, memory uh, onto the PC and then you can save the file. Uh, the reason for doing this is if you want to restore back to the official firmware then the easiest way to do that is to restore your flash backup and then just to do the install, install the official firmware again and it won't notice then that uh, you've been doing anything on the radio because everything including all the flash, would be put exactly back the way it was before the open firmware was installed. Anyway, so I'm not going to show this happening because it does take about five minutes to do, so uh, I'll leave that. And the first thing I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to actually write my code plug to the radio. So this is an OpenGD77 code plug. If you don't already have an OpenGD77 code plug, you could try to export your code plug data from the official CPS, maybe your channel's data, and import it somehow into, as a CSV or something in, into this OpenGD77 CPS. Uh, however, I recommend actually just making the code plug from scratch because really it's likely that the code plug structure that you've had to write using the official firmware uh, doesn't need to be as complex if you rewrite it for the OpenGD77, but that's uh, that's a different uh, that's a topic for another video probably. Anyway, so I'm going to write the code plug now to the radio here. Right, and uh, looking at the radio, writing the code plug, reboots. Okay, so as you can see, instantly we've now got nice frequencies uh, if we push that we're getting channels and everything so you can see the radio is kind of halfway there to working really so we've got a functional code plug in there now the other thing that you can do is you can upload the satellite cap so I often do this anyway even if I'm not using satellite it doesn't really do any harm it doesn't take up any uh, space that uh, would be used for anything else so you can install the caps good thing about installing the caps it also sets the clock in the radio and this radio has got a hardware real-time clock so once it's set it will remember the time uh, you can uh, upload the uh, some voice prompts uh, which is a different topic but uh, I've got already got them downloaded so I'm going to upload voice prompts into the radio and they're fully sported as well and you can install callsign database now i'm just going to do this quickly i'm going to download the 505 region callsign database so it downloads the whole database uh, for worldwide and then it has to filter out and just uh, keep the uh, region uh, 505 so that's what it's doing now so just got the 505 what i'm also going to do here is i'm going to increase the record length uh, because i if I just have it 16 characters, that's just going to be call sign and about another 8 or 10 characters. Whereas if I uh, increase this up to its maximum, then what it's going to do is give me uh, like the full name as well as the call sign, etc. This radio has got a lot of memory. It's got 16 megabytes of memory. So you can download the entire DMR ID database 
and store it in the radio at its maximum length. So uh, you can do that. It, however, it does take quite a long time to upload to the radio. So I'm just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to download uh, the 505 region and then just write that to the radio. So here we go. Uh, this is 3,787 records. Okay, that's that done. Radio's just rebooted. So there we go. That is the firmware totally installed and uh, working in the UV380. A few things to note with the user interface on the UV380. The display's a lot taller so things aren't quite, and it's also wider, so things aren't quite in the same place at the moment. This is only alpha version firmware, and I doubt in the future we can uh, tidy things up a little bit and probably make more use of the screen. At the moment, we're just using black and white. In the future, we may start adding color to it if the color's beneficial. Uh, I think sometimes uh, colors put into uh, some displays and doesn't really help it just make to kind of make a make it look different but uh, tried a few different background colors and to be honest I feel white's the best background color anyway because the highest level of contrast what doesn't look too bad actually on this radio is switching to uh, inverse color so I'm just going to the radio mode a second and just demonstrate so I was going to the display options and uh, color normal color invert so inverse color doesn't look uh, too bad either Looks quite good, really. So, uh, yeah. So, going back to the uh, home screen. Now, in terms of the user interface, I'm just comparing with the, the GD77 here. Then the main difference between this, apart from the display height, is that the GD77's got a left and a right key, whereas the UV380 has only got an up and a down key. Uh, there's quite a lot of functionality in the firmware which is accessed by the right and the left key. So in order to provide that functionality, we've had to repurpose the up and down buttons to act as left. So the most left-hand button acts as the left button on the GD77, and the, uh, the most right-hand button, which is the down button, acts as the, the right button. You might say, where's the, uh, how are we going to move up and down? Well, this uh, this radio, of course, has got a rotary control on the top of it, so so that acts as the up and down control for the uh, VFO and also on the channel screen. There we go, so that's moving, uh, moving up and down. And then pressing, so pressing the, the right hand most key increases... Uh, effectively increases whatever the value is here so that's in this case changing the talk group if we were in say FM I'll just switch the radio into FM uh, so the right hand most key is increasing the squelch like it does on the GD77 and left hand most key reduces the squelch just like on the GD77 same thing with power so to increase power SK2 key plus the right key so that's increasing power and then SK2 and the left most key reducing the power so that's the standard thing as in the uh, the GD77 now the slight difference is in the menus that the up and down key do operate as up and down and in that case the rotary control acts to vary the setting so for example the brightness here I've moved up and down using the up and down key to get brightness and then the rotary control is dimming the uh, brightness. Oh, you can see the uh, backlight effect on here actually strobing. The backlight frequency is 100 hertz actually. It's not visible through the uh, just normally, but obviously with a camera, it's picking up on uh, picking up on that. Anyway, so those are the main user interface differences between the GD77 and this radio because of the uh, the lack of buttons okay so i think that's just about uh, wraps up how to install the open gd77 on the tyt uv380 also known as a retivis rt3s